Hello, hello! This is Robert Adut, brought to you by the Yay Math Video Project at yaymath.org. Uh, this is called Yay Math in Studio. We're banging out several videos on understanding logs or logarithms. So this time we're going to be talking about common logs. Common logs basically means log of base 10, okay? And they become very handy when we're trying to solve the following equations. So let's look at it. Five, let's say five to the x equals 25. In this type of problemo, we can solve this because we know that five to something does equal 25 and x is none other than the number two. So that works, that's great. But what if we had five to the x equals 30? Five to what equals the number 30? Well, we can't really think of that number, can we? It's like definitely more than two and way less than three because five times five times five, well, five times five is 25. And then 25 times five, that's five quarters, that's 125. So it's somewhere between two and three, right? 30. So what we need to do is we need to introduce logs into this problem such that we can solve for x. Okay, using properties of logs, we are permitted to take the log of both sides of this equation. If we can't establish the same base number, in this case, the base number would be five, right? Instead of 25, we have uh, five, so we have the same base here, five and five, therefore, the exponents would be the same. We can't create the same base here. When we cannot create the same base, we take the log of both sides. I'm going to write that. Log over here, log over here. And we get 5 to the x equals log of 30. Okay, after introducing the log on both sides, we can use properties of logs to solve for x. If you recall from our properties of logs video, what you can do here is that if you have a log raised to a power, a log is an exponent, and this is also an exponent. And based on how exponents operate, this is just a random example, 3 is an exponent and 2 is an exponent. If you recall what you do when you take powers to powers, you multiply these, this becomes 6. It's sort of multiply, it's a little trick. 3 times 2 is 6. So that's when you take a power raised to another power. A log, we agree, is an exponent, all right? And x is also an exponent. That means we can multiply these two. So in short, the property is this x moves to the front. I'll write down log 30 again. So I just multiplied this power times this power, okay? And the good news is now that x is alongside the log 5, in order to isolate x, we divide both sides by log 5. Gone. x equals whatever log 30 divided by log 5 is. All right, um, I think I'm going to need this on, I can do this on the calc. Um, actually, it's kind of cool for uh, fellow iPhone users. It's okay if you're not using iPhone, of course, but many times um, people don't know how to use the calculator on the iPhone because they, they set it up weird on the calculator. You have to actually do 30 then log. Right? Whereas a traditional calculator, you do log 30, hit enter. So I'm going to actually do that right now. It'll be kind of cool. And I'll walk you through the process verbally. All right, here we go. I'm not going to update my software right now, actually. Okay, turn it to the side. Here we go. So I'm going to do 30 log. You can do it with me. Boom. Divided by 5 log equals, yes, 2.11. Again, 30 log divided by 5 log equals. So that's, if anyone has ever forgotten their calculator, some other home or bag or something like that, be ready to use some, that calculator if necessary, 2.11, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to explore the, uh, this uh, equation using what's called the change of base formula. 
the book has this, so we're going to explore the change of base formula now. This is the change of base formula. Here's how it goes. All right, let me take that. All right, 5 to the x equals 30. Now, based on our understanding of logs, we could turn this exponent into log form. Let's actually do that. This exponent into log form. Oh, actually, I want to make sure we had x over here from our previous equation was log 30 over log 5. I want to make sure we have that. Didn't want to lose that from before. Let's turn this into log form. Log. Okay. What's the base here? 5x or 30. The base is 5. The number itself is 30. And this equals the exponent x. Okay. Many of the calculators these days actually let you plug in different logs that are not a common base, meaning base 10, like this one. See, these are all base 10. If you see that there's no base, you imply that it's base 10. Okay, so this is 10. This is 10. That's an implication. Anytime you see no base here, it's base 10. So some calculators, you can plug in log of base 5, which is not a common log, of 30, and you should get x. But if you look closely here, we just proved something. It turns out that x is log base 5 of 30, and x is also log of 30 over log 5. x is log of 30 over log 5. This is called the change of base formula. That means that we can write instead of this, assuming we didn't have the calculator to do this, and we have only like simple calculators like a phone or something, that's log of 30 over log 5, based on this. x is both of these. x is this from our previous equation, and this is x based on turning this exponent into a log. So we can use this rule for uh, evaluating any log with any base, right? You could say like log base 18 of 40 is equivalent to log of the big number divided by log 18. Kind of cool. We just discovered that together. Okay? Again, so you take this one, log of the top, divided by log of the bottom, all base 10. You can do that on the calculator. Okay? And this should be something like 1 point blah blah blah, because 18 to the 1 point something should be 40. Because 18 to the 2 would be way bigger than 40. Okay? And we could put that in the calculator and verify. One more time for practice. Here we go. Turn it. Okay. So we got 40 log divided by 18 log equals 1.28-ish. So this is 1.28. That means 18 to the 1.28 results in the number 40. Okay. Good. And... Okay, one more. Okay, let's do this last one because uh, oftentimes you'll see problems like this and they can be a little misleading, but you're going to know what to do. So the first goal is to see if we can create the same base. Like, let's say that base would be 3. 3, this part's already taken care of. Can we write 60 as base 3? As in like 3 to the 1, 3 to the 2, 3 to the 3, 3 to the 4. Well, it's not 3 to the 1, that's 3. This is 9. 3 times 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. And then 27 times 3, this is 3, 3, 3, 3. You could say this is 9, this is 9, this is 81. So we're already over it. We're already over 60 here. So it's not, we can't write it in base 3. So we do log of both sides. That's the tactic. Here we go. Log. Log. Bring it in. 3 to the x plus 4 equals log 60. x plus 4. Move it to the front. Move it to the front. Move it to the front. And we're in the hunt. Log 3. Log 60. I want to get x to be by itself as soon as possible. So one way to do that is to divide both sides by the factor log 3 by log 3. 
gaon. And we're left with, you know, leaves a little more real estate here, x plus 4 equals log 60 over log 3. This is gone. Subtract 4 on both sides to get x by itself. We're left with x equals log 60 over log 3 uh, minus 4. And that's the number we plug in for x. Let's get in the calculator. Hopefully I can rock this out. Here we go. Okay, here we go. 60 log divided by 3 log equals minus 4 equals negative 0.273. x equals negative 0.273. All right, the good news about this and these types of problems is that we have the power to plug in x to see if three to that number results in 60. Let's try it. If x was negative 2.73, or negative 0 0.273, 0 0.273, negative, all right? I'm gonna do it on the calc, here we go. Negative 0.273 plus four, boom, is 0 0.72, 0 0.727, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so she comes three to the point, or uh, three point, yeah, seven, two, seven, yeah. Okay, so three to that number, let's confirm one more time. 0.273, negative, <laughs> plus four. <laughs> Get so like in the wrapped up. Yeah, 3.727. Should equal, when I hit enter, three to the this, I should see the number 60. Let's hope. Three to the 3.7. Two seven, boom. So yeah, sixty point zero 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 one or something. So it works. The reason I went through that process is, what if I made a mistake? Which I've proven that I've I can often, right? If I made a mistake, I'm welcome to plug it in and see that when I plug in x three to that number, whatever it is, if it's not sixty, I know to backtrack and cover my own mistake, right, and fix it. So you're welcome to plug it in if you're taking a test or something and verify that you're in control. And if you make a mistake, you can catch your own mistake. It's part of the luxuries of math, which is kind of cool. Like it always checks out, okay? Thanks so much for watching this and going through process with me and uh, going through it with the phone, you know, we need it in a pinch. So I hope you help, that helped you 60 log and so forth. All right, peace later, bye. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Thanks to my friend Zach there behind the camera. He actually had a good point. Um, he was asking why can't log 60 divided by log 3 equal log of 20? Like that's the, like as if the logs cancel or something or 60 divided by 3. And uh, the reason is very nuanced. The reason we can't do that is that log of 60 is basically log base 10 of 60. And this is log base 10 of 3. Log base 10 of 60 is its own answer, its own lion, like 10 to the, something like 10.1 point something, 10 to the one. This is 10 to some crazy fraction, because let, that's actually less than one, you know? This is 10 to the what is 60. This is 10 to the what is three. So these are their own problems, and they basically have nothing to do with 10 to the what is 20 which would be what these two divide to. So we have to treat them as their own, like their own operation, as opposed to combining into a single operation. Okay, hope that helps. All right, bye again.